Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Chris Allen, Chris Smith, not Chris, Mark Gibson, and Jude Sturman. On this episode of DTNS, McDonald's ends its AI test. The U.S. is trying to ban DJI. And should social media come with a warning label? This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, June 17th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chain. The Surgeon General advises that use of this show could cause something, but he doesn't know what. No. Actually, he never said anything about us, but, you know, we're social media, right? We're something you find on social media. Exactly. Exactly. So I think we fall under the warning label. Uh, We're going to get to that in a minute, though. Let's start with the hits that are quick. TDK, yeah, you know, the old cassette makers, uh, announced a ceramic solid-state battery that uses oxide-based solid electrolytes and lithium alloy anodes. Now, you don't need to know what any of that means. If you do, great. Most lithium-ion batteries, though, use liquid, not solid, and that makes them less stable. Solid-state batteries are safe enough to wear next to your skin, and TDK says its battery should not only be safer but cheaper to produce and have a longer operating time, a thousand watt hours per liter. Traditional liquid electrolyte coin batteries for watches and portable devices offer 400 watt hours per liter. Uh, TDK plans to replace coin cell batteries with this version of a battery for wearables like watches and headphones. Sadly, the ceramic material they're using, while great for a coin size battery, is too fragile for phone size batteries or anything larger. Google is rolling out an Android Chrome option called Listen to This Page, where you can customize speed, pause, and play what kind of voice it uses to read the web page for you. If you have access to it, it will show up in the three-dot menu under Translate. We're just going to start doing the show that way. We'll just publish it as a web page and have Chrome read it. Uh, Switzerland's Proton, uh, the maker of Proton Mail, most famously, but a bunch of other privacy-oriented software and services, uh, are doing a reverse open AI. Uh, Proton AG is for-profit and will remain a for-profit company, but a non-profit called Proton Foundation has been created and is going to become, if it's already by now, its major shareholder. This is similar to what Mozilla and Signal have done. They have a non-profit overarching company, uh, and then they have a for-profit subsidiary. Interestingly, the information says that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman floated the idea to the board that it might change its structure to a for-profit business that the nonprofit board does not control. Right now, OpenAI is a capped profit company controlled by its nonprofit parent organization. A lot of money at stake there. A lot, lot of money. money. Yeah, so much money. Smartwatch and heart rate monitor maker for triathletes, Koros, is entering the smart cycling business. It's Dura GPS unit as a small 2.7 inch screen below some solar panels, along with a big battery. The panel should give writers 120 hours of consecutive writing without having to recharge. The panels generate two hours of battery life for every hour of direct sunlight. So in the right conditions, the battery might not need recharging much, if at all. You can order now for $249 or €289, and it's shipping July 15th. Yeah, if you live in a sunny place and you can park your bike in a safe, sunny area, you might never have to plug that thing in. Logitech introduced a stylus called the MX Inc. for the MetaQuest 2 and 3 headsets and Future Proof. They said it should work with Future Quest headsets as well. Uh, It's for use in 2 and 3D media in virtual reality. It's the first third-party motion peripheral for the Quest. It has haptic feedback a pressure-sensitive tip, and Logitech promises it has a pen-like feel when you use it. You can also buy the MX Matte, described as a low-friction 2D surface meant for the MX Inks tip, if you want that feel to be perfect. Logitech MX Ink Stylus will launch in late September for 130 bucks. Or if you want to get a fancy little charging dock, you can just plug it into USB-C. But if you want a little charging dock, uh, they'll sell you the stylus and the charging dock for $170. Expect it to be available around the time of Meta Connect, which starts September 25th. I don't know. 
if any of you have been through a McDonald's drive through where you found you weren't really talking to a person, but McDonald's has been testing automated drive through ordering in partnership with IBM for a couple of years now in a hundred of its restaurants in the United States. It will, however, end that partnership at all participating restaurants no later than July 26th, 2024. Chief Restaurant Officer, Chief Restaurant Officer, the CRO of McDonald's USA, mm -hmm. Mason Smoot, uh, said they haven't given up on this, that they are evaluating a new partner and will make a decision, quote, on a future voice ordering solution by the end of the year. Now, The Verge noted that Bloomberg had reported Google and McDonald's signed a deal back in December that was kind of vague on the details. So everybody's kind of guessing like, oh, they're just ditching IBM for Google. Which is certainly possible. Uh, the, the reality of McDonald's financial structure is that they are a franchise that then licenses out your ability to run a McDonald's. So you put up the money, you apply to McDonald's, you have all your plans run through them in terms of the specifications of what you're going to build and how you're going to build it, what you're going to charge. And then you wind up buying everything that you sell at McDonald's from McDonald's that maintains the uniform quality across all the different locations, blah, 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 blah. But a business solution like this that could theoretically reduce overhead in terms of employee salaries, but maybe even give a better experience to the customers, probably something that they want to get right before they start charging their franchisees for it, which I could only imagine they will. Yeah, that's the other part of this that's interesting. Uh, IBM was the partner because IBM bought McDonald's Tech Labs, McD Tech Labs, last year. Uh, and so it feels like this is a carryover where they were developing this and planning to put it in restaurants. And then IBM bought it. And they're like, well, well let's let's keep going with the plan. Uh, and, and now that they've done it, it doesn't sound like it was a failure. And I say that because I didn't hear stories all over the internet of how people had horrible experiences at McDonald's with this. I don't think most people noticed, to be honest. Uh, but it does sound like McDonald's didn't like it for whatever reason. Maybe it wasn't in its performance with customers. Maybe it was back-end stuff. They want it to run cheaper or they, they want more analytics or something. Uh, and so they're going to go with some kind of other partner. Have you, have you ever run through a drive-thru, Justin, that had some kind of automated system so for i ordering? don't know if this is that but there is a mcdonald's that periodically i will uh, uh you know not have the willpower to pass by or i'm especially in a rush and need a quick meal that will consistently ask me whether or not i've i'm ordering on the app and i'm never ordering on the app so i've never gotten to see what the next step of that is if it's uh -huh. Oh, if you're ordering on the app, what's your name? There's very simple voice recognition. And then it says, okay, cool. Just pull up. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know. I always have to order from a human because I'm, I'm paying with an ancient credit card. Yeah. 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 I actually think this is a perfect use of LLMs. Uh, you could, you could do on device models to handle this. You don't have to use a cloud computer for it. Uh, it's a very limited amount of situations. So there's not much chance of hallucination. Uh, and, you know, with text to speech and speech to text uh, the way it is, uh, we've seen ChatGPT and plenty of others demonstrate that you can talk to these things and they can talk back to you in a normal voice. Uh, McDonald's is not alone. Checkers, Rallies, Hardee's, Carl's Jr., same thing. Crystal, Wendy's, Duncan, Taco John's, all are either testing or implementing something like this. And having just gone through a McDonald's yesterday because we were with a two-month-old dog that just made it impossible to decide on anything except what was right in front of us at the time, uh, there was a lot of like, what was that again? Okay, did you? what did you say? And I feel like yeah. an LLM wouldn't do that, that it would, it would either understand you or not, and there wouldn't be that weird crosstalk that you get when it's two humans talking. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean depending on what solution they're using, I think there are ways that you can reduce hallucinations and you could make it a fairly seamless process. I don't know if the solution for this now is for all customers. I would wonder whether or not it might be only for app customers and like tap to pay people that already have crossed a certain technological threshold barrier and therefore are probably 
relieved to speak to a technological solution because they have a general sense of how it works and how it doesn't work. And then anybody who wants to pay cash still speaks to a human. But then again, I don't know if that really solves anything because if there's somebody at the register, then that means that you have to pay for somebody to be at the register. They might as well be talking to a bunch of people as opposed to one out of every five customers. Yeah. I, I do think that, in the will it take our jobs part of this, uh, I do think that that is probably this is more about efficiency, more about speeding up the process, right? Because that person checking out can just check out uh, and the orders potentially get routed faster if there's not a human in the loop, maybe uh, McDonald's, you know, judges that stuff in microseconds. Uh, so even just a slight improvement would be worth it for them. Uh, so I don't think you're going to see McDonald's f employing fewer people. Uh, maybe some franchisees will try it, but I don't think it eliminates that. I think it allows you to put people in more efficient places where they can improve the speed of the service. Cause that was the other thing. When I went there, they made us pull over into the, uh, uh, into the accessible parking space uh, yeah. while we waited for our order. Cause, and that happens a lot these days. Yeah, I, I I wonder if also this isn't a an excuse to move back into more expansive hours if you need fuel oh, because yeah. I do think that I do think that this it's does that reduce too. headcount. I do think it does reduce headcount. I I don't know if that means that okay you spread the headcount over so now you're you're opened later, which used to be something pre pandemic that was very common and now is more rare. All right, let's talk about the National Defense Authorization Act. Ah, I bet you didn't think we'd talk about that today. Well, guess what? We are. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it is a United States bill that becomes law and then funds the Department of Defense, as well as several other defense initiatives, like things in the Department of Energy related to defense, uh, other defense projects, etc. This year, the NDAA includes a provision that prohibits the U.S. Federal Communications Commission from approving Chinese company DJI from uh, getting use of certain frequencies in the U.S. that you need approval to operate drones or to sell drones that broadcast in those frequencies, to be more precise. Uh, that wouldn't technically stop DJI from selling products in the United States, but it would not be able to import their drones that use those frequencies because they would be unapproved devices by the FCC. So it's a it's an interesting 4D chess move to be like, we're not banning DJI, we're just banning them from using these frequencies for all the products that they make the most money off of. Uh, it's also possible that depending on how this law is interpreted, it could ground existing DJI drones because they are using those frequencies. It remains to be seen if that that is a bit of a, an exaggeration or not, but uh, this is not the whole of the Defense Authorization Act, it was its own bill that was then moved in to become a paragraph in the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, I know, Justin, that y'all over there at uh, We Are Not Wrong call that a dingleberry. Can you explain dingleberries to us and then talk about the next attempt of the U.S. <laughs> government to ban a Chinese company? So that particular term of art, I have to give full and complete credit to uh, the brilliant Jen Briney, of course, my co-host on We're Not Wrong and the host of the Congressional Dish podcast. But a dingleberry, as she would describe it, is this little bit of something that goes on to gigantic bills. The National Defense Authorization Act, certainly a repeat offender, but also any kind of omnibus budget bills that wind up going through things that are so large that nobody is going to stop the show of it passing that usually come with a lot of different negotiation because one little thing is on there. And so this is an example of that. It just drafts underneath the momentum of this massive bill that actually was a little bit closer of a vote than it normally is in the House because there were some uh, uh, political issues around uh, the military and uh, uh, abortion access. But it gets through. And then this is the kind of stuff that's there. So where do we want to start? Is this the the the, the China side or the technical side of what they want to do here, Tom? Okay, yeah. Let, let, well, let's start. It's in the Senate. So there's a chance it doesn't get passed. The it's, NDAA it's 
it's okay. So, so you're yes. saying this is going to get passed. This is going to become law. Great. Yes. Then it becomes, why are they doing this? Uh, DJI already restricted from military and a lot of government use. Uh, so they're really saying we don't want DJI devices operating at all in, in the United States. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and by the way, Nick with a C points out that you can just change a module and change frequencies. That shouldn't stop imports. Uh, as I understand it, and I could be wrong about this, they are banning the FCC from approving DJI from using any of the frequencies that would be allowed to be used for, for drones. So we're, we're not getting, uh, we're, we're, they're not going to get approval for any drone to operate. They, if they switched out a module, they wouldn't have approval for those frequencies either. Um, anyway, uh, it's interesting to me why they're doing this, Justin. Well, they're doing it because of China, right? <laughs> this is, this is a a a move uh, uh, because we are in a, an increasingly tense period with China, and drones are not the future of warfare; they are the present. Some of the biggest uh, national defense companies that we have seen are drone based, and there is obviously a a push within the 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 military sector of the United States that believes that this should not stand. Yeah. And I still wonder, you know, they've, they've done it with TikTok. TikTok is going to sue about it. We'll see if DJI sues. Maybe DJI sues too. Uh, who's next? I mean, they've done it with Huawei. They've done it with ZTE and ZTE was able to get back into the good graces. Uh, it does appear that they are going after companies that are successful uh, rather than going after technologies. Um, I, and I, I feel like this is as much political as it is grounded in technology. Yeah. Although I, I think that from our perspective, if we're to pick and choose their targets, it, it, it might just be them moving at the speed of government that, that they believe everything Chinese should be banned today. And this is as fast as they're able to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, also good to point out, uh, these are not the kind of drones that are used by the military for drone strikes. These are quadcopters. I I gave up years ago fighting the battle of saying quadcopter or unmanned aerial vehicle. And when I was talking about a quadcopter instead of drone, uh, but they people use the term for both. We're talking yeah. about personal drones for real estate shots and things like that, you know, or sending a cell phone into a prison, not, not for dropping bombs. Well, depends i mean i guess there's 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 a lot a lot that can be done up to and including spying and stuff. oh sure so. not, not that you can't make a quadcopter into something malicious it's just a, it's a different thing uh every year we aim to improve dtns and keep it as your best source for understanding the tech world around us and you are essential to that let us know what you love about the show and what you're like you know i wish they would change that uh we have our mid-year survey up at dailytechnewsshow.com slash survey it'll take you a few minutes and help us out tremendously once again that's dailytechnewsshow.com slash survey Remember those uh, cigarette labels, Justin, that would say the Surgeon General has determined that cigarettes may cause cancer? Do they not say that anymore? Well, do they still say the exact same thing? I haven't looked at a pack of cigarettes in a while. You, so you, 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 you keep with the read and I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy wants those on social media. They want Facebook, you know, to come with a warning, social media may cause low birth weight, except not low birth weight, because that's not what social media causes. That's what cigarettes cause. Vivek Murthy wrote an opinion piece in the New York Times recommending that the U.S. pass a law requiring these labels, citing some studies that bear out what he considers are urgent risks. Uh, the Digital Wellness Lab's Pulse survey showed that less than half but close to half of 1,480 adolescents surveyed in the U.S. said social media gave them body image issues. A study published in the JAMA Psychiat Psychiatry Journal found that in a study of 6,595 U.S. adolescents, spending more than three hours a day on social media was correlated with twice the incidence of symptoms of anxiety and depression. Now, Dr. Murthy acknowledged that there is not consensus on what the damages are. Uh, 
I have talked about some of these other studies out there, like a study of 2,891 Finnish adolescents published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health that found that depressive symptoms predicted increased social media use, but not that social media use predicted depressive symptoms. So in other words, if you're depressed, it could cause you to use social media. If you use yeah. social media, it wouldn't cause you to become depressed. Uh, the Oxford Internet Institute studied well-being across 72 countries. I like this. We're getting out of our national boundaries and found no connection between increased use of Facebook and increased psychological harm. And there's even a study of Welsh students that found mixed results. That study found better well-being associated with children who spoke online to other children they knew whereas children who spoke to people they did not know showed poorer well-being, especially for teenage girls. So if we've got all these studies that are showing different kinds of things, why the need for the warning right now? Well, Dr. Murthy wrote, in an emergency, you don't have the luxury to wait for perfect information. You assess the available facts, you use your best judgment, and you act quickly. Justin, is this an emergency? No. Put, <laughs> well, thanks, folks. <laughs> uh, to put to put a, a particularly yeah, yeah. fine point on it. Nor do I think emergency surgery is the metaphor that you would like to apply to public policy, which is essentially what Dr. Murthy is doing here. By the way, Surgeon General's warning: smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and may complicate pregnancy. Is what is on the side of got it. Okay. Uh, a tobacco, uh, you know. Those are very serious illnesses. Not yeah. that I'm saying anxiety and depression are not also serious illnesses. Here's what's frustrating about it, because I do think that there should be a very sophisticated conversation about this stuff. There's no doubt that there's a lot of anxiety about the anxiety that is happening to children who spend a lot of time online. But dealing with the, the complications of how that comes together, how difficult it is to be a teenager of any era and what exactly the online uh, world is giving in benefit and what it is giving in negatives is very, very sophisticated. What I would have greatly preferred for the Surgeon General to do is acknowledge that there are some studies that say this can be bad. And more specifically, as you pointed out, there are very specific classes of people for which parents should know if their kids have these issues. If you have a child who already has anxiety, if you have a child that's already prone to depression, if you have a family history of any of those, then maybe monitoring your children's social media usage is something that's going to be better for them. But to label it outright, not only is harmful, but also an emergency that requires, he says, a, a warning label and pushing legislation, which we can get to in a second, I just think is rash and and it gives people that would otherwise a lot of folks who are listening to this show who would otherwise be very sympathetic to a mature conversation about this. It just gives them the X and, and I sympathize. Yeah. Well, and, and to be fair to Dr. Murthy, uh, he previously issued an advisory that kind of does what you're saying, which is, I, you know, encourage minors, parents and policymakers to mitigate potential risk by providing a model for responsible social media use, as well as supporting more research. I'm a thousand percent, and that's not even mathematically possible, in support of that. Yes, <laughs> give guidance. Yes, help parents understand what they're dealing with so they can supervise their children and help their children learn how to deal with it. Yes, support more research because we are far from having all the facts that we need to understand what the harms are and where the risks actually lie. That's why I think putting a warning label feels like I mean, the Surgeon General is not an elected position, but it feels like a political move to satisfy a voter population versus something that would affect change. And in fact, it could affect harm if people get inured to it and saying, yeah, it says it says there's a warning, but then nobody really knows, uh, rather than saying, hey, you know what? Use caution. Uh, we, we still don't know all the risks here. And, and sticking with that more reasonable tone that you were talking about. Not to mention that this is largely a pop culture conversation and one that is often tinged by nostalgia. 
I'm 41 years old. I grew up on the internet and some of my fondest memories were spending late nights uh, uh, on AIM, a chat app. Now, as we got older and we looked at generations behind us, we said, no, 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 this is, this is really, really terrible because now social media is algorithmically driven and all you do is get fed this garbage that's there so you can generate page views so they can move advertising. But as we were complaining, the kids that were growing up five to 10 years behind that started moving en masse to non-algorithmically driven social media like Discord and Snapchat, which are essentially chat apps. So they're kind of more like how my generation was growing up. They just want a place where they can talk to their friends and other people that are like their friends. And they aren't being generated a lot of stuff for page views like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So uh, uh, social media is such a gigantic broad brush. I I just, and let's get into the, the legislation Part of what Dr. Murthy says should happen is a legislation, the the Keep uh, Kids Online Safe Act, that is controversial and one that will likely, if it comes to a, a, you know, a point where it may become law, will likely generate a lot of Internet protests in the same way that uh, we've seen in the past with other laws like uh, uh, SOPA and PIPA. So. Uh, it, when when you tie these things together, I think it just erodes the ability, the bully pulpit of the Surgeon General to talk to parents about what something that they might very well be worried about. Yeah, yeah. No, I I will say that di- there's more in Dr. Murthy's column than just the warning label. That's the thing that's getting all the attention. There's some pretty solid things in there about just doing general protecting of children uh, online, you know, re- reducing the amount of data collected about them and restricting how it can be used and all of that. In fact, one thing I think that is that is great in there uh, is the idea that uh, you you could you could sort of um, you know. Uh, call for uh, transparency into the algorithms so that there can be more research on this. Uh, maybe you need to mandate cooperation that says, hey, the the academics need to be able to look at data from Facebook, Instagram, X, and beyond in order to be able to find out what the effects of this are. And some companies cooperate more than others in providing that data. And so, you know, being able to to make that more academically accessible, I think would be a good thing as well. Also, what if we're on the other end of algorithmically driven social media as we knew it? What if right? we already passed peak algorithm because yeah. display advertising is not the golden goose that it once was? Yeah. So are we are, unbundling are we, are we... Internet Explorer right as Chrome rises? Perhaps. Exactly. <laughs> You know, there, All right, there's, there, there's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's check out the mailbag. I uh, got a great email from Connor. Actually, a couple of emails. Connor, thanks for the good emails. Uh, Connor says, hey, guys, I got some questions regarding the satellite connectivity in iOS 18. Remember, they're not introducing it with iOS 18. They're expanding it. So you can you can text non-emergency stuff. Uh, he says, I read many sources reporting it will support iMessage and SMS. iMessage makes sense. It's a different protocol created and controlled by Apple. SMS, though, is not. For SMS to function in this manner, they would need to be offering roaming via satellite. Else, the only way I can think of right now would be some kind of spoofing or of your sender ID. This absolutely won't be the case, not to mention that responses received over SMS would go to your carrier, not Apple. So question currently stands, does it support SMS really or something else like RCS? If it does support SMS, is it roaming? And if it's roaming, what will my carrier charge me? Uh, sorry, it's not answers. Just wanted to add to the conversation. Not up to date, but hope you got the pupper and all is going smoothly. Thank you, Connor. Yes, we got the pupper and all is going as smoothly as puppies go. Uh, I have not found the exact answer to Connor's question. Uh, I did find a report when they launched emergency SOS via satellite that Apple partnered with Global Star, uh, investing $450 million in Global Star's infrastructure uh, for satellite connectivity. And uh, the charges are around $12 a month for basic emergency services. So your carrier is not involved. It's still SMS because it's a different modem getting satellite connectivity 
through Global Star back then. I don't know if they've changed it since then. Uh, and then Apple was footing the bill for it. Uh, the subscription gets more expensive for those who want to send unlimited text messages is what this said at the time. Uh, I don't know if we're at unlimited with iOS 18, but definitely something that Apple is going to have to collect some money from. But it does not look like it involves your carrier. It looks like it involves Global Star and an agreement of carriage between Apple and Global Star. Uh, if anybody else has a more definitive answer, please feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Thank you, Connor, the telecoms software engineer in Sardinia. Hope Sardinia's weather is treating you well. And I hope Justin Robert Young is well. Are you well, Justin? Uh, uh, well, I think so. <laughs> I think you're great. How? Uh, what else you got going on these days? Uh, well, friends, we, we mentioned Jen Briney of uh, the Congressional Dish podcast. I would very much encourage you to listen to that, but also listen to me and Jen Briney and Andrew Heaton talk each and every week about the news that is fit to discuss. We're not wrong. Available on podcast platforms everywhere and on YouTube, youtube.com slash at sign. Where it is not quite wrong. no uh, the, no apostrophe in where no apostrophe right quite the enjoyable weekly listen I, I highly recommend it patrons stick around for the extended show good day internet the BBC has an article indicating AI is creating jobs for copywriters AI is creating jobs for copywriters because they need them to make AI copies sound more human we're going to discuss that. Mm. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>